So let's go through the macro fundamentals. I'll just kind of list them out so we are aware of what we're going to cover. And then to Ren's point, let's go through some let's of them. So <laughs> the macro fundamentals are the cycle, the state influences on property, population growth, unemployment rates, infrastructure projects, economic vibrancy, mm. land inventory, and build prices. Yes. So they're the big macro fundamentals that go into what drives the market or the suburb yep. that you're looking at. So let's start with cycle yeah cycle is a funny one because a lot of people try and like dispel the idea of a cycle um but i am very uh pro understanding a cycle and making sure you're buying at the right point um so yeah a lot of people will talk also about like um past growth right um but past growth is definitely not an indicator of future growth so if an area has had you know 12 to 15 percent or even 10 to 15 percent per annum average uh, capital growth over the last 10 years i'm very wary of an area like that because it's, it's more than doubled in the last 10 years um so it's something you have to be again very very careful of and so when you're understanding the cycles that a market's in um really you're understanding it from an affordability perspective how much room does it potentially have for growth i think like understanding the cycle side of things um you know, it really comes down to an affordability perspective of where it's at. And when it's had a huge run, a lot of the time it doesn't have that potential to continue to grow. Because when you look at an affordability, and we've spoken before about like median house price, uh, sorry, median incomes to house price ratios, it's so important to understand this because if you're buying in something that's at a very like frothy point from that perspective, it doesn't really have the room to grow. So when we talk about cycles, we're typically talking about cities. Um, states can sometimes be kind of, you know, almost bundled into a cycle. Um, but yeah, normally it's like a city or a region. Where is it at in a cycle? Is it nearing a peak? Um, is it past the peak? Is it bottoming? Is it just lifting up? Um, it's very important to understand where they are. Um, yeah, to get a really good snapshot of whether it's worth even initially even putting the time into researching it or not. When you understand the affordability of a market in its cycle, um, that can really be a, a very, very early indicator of do I even put the time into this? And a couple of these big ones from a macro perspective are designed to cancel areas out. And that, and that's the whole yeah, point okay. of when you're going through a checklist, it's almost like peeling back the onion. You know what I mean? Like you got, you got heaps on the outside initially, you peel that layer off and you get rid of heaps of them because it's the biggest, right? Mm. And then again, you peel, you peel, you peel, and you keep peeling back these layers to eliminate areas. You're not trying to find areas, you're trying to eliminate areas in this, in this especially this early piece um, where you're you know, starting with over 15,000 suburbs. And when you're looking, Looking for data on 15,000 <laughs> What like what's your data source to yeah. sort of get that? Is it just core logic or is there uh, like I'm I'm just smiling. Yeah. So I'm, <laughs> I'm guessing you've got some proprietary data, but like for punters like Bryce and I, if we yeah. want to sort of see where different suburbs are in cycles. Yeah, yeah. Go? I mean, core logic definitely gives you like an early, like a very easy indicator. If you're just looking at like kind of average annual growth rates, um, even I think realestate.com will, will provide that sort of stuff. So there are free platforms that'll give you that sort of average annual um, data. So the second one is state influences <clears throat> on property. Yeah. So how does that affect what you're looking for? Yeah, man. So place? it's a very big one. So um, again, it allows you to very easily eliminate states um, at a certain points in the cycle. So if you look at say an area like um, Victoria right now, they just went through a massive land tax reform. They went through a big um, uh, landlord uh, reform as well. So like you don't really want to be a property investor in Victoria right now. Um, and we're seeing a big exodus of people actually selling out. They're not making it pro uh, investor area. They're, they're trying to kind of get that shift back to, to owner ox. Um, but right now there's a, there's an exodus of a lot of people trying to sell out. So it's that sort of, it's that time where, and it may bottom out sooner than a lot of other areas, which means in the next couple of years, it could be worth looking at. But right now we're, we're not at the bottom yet. We're kind of going through that downward, downward sort of slide as, as people are exiting. So the third big factor is one that I think people <laughs> probably intuitively understand, yeah. uh, population growth. So is there any quirks to this or it's just a supply and demand game? Yeah, it, it really is. But it, it's um, when we're talking about sourcing locations, obviously population growth has become a big uh, thing in the last let's say 12 to 18 months, right? Because borders were closed, reopened, Australia's getting smashed. We're also in a massive housing shortage. So like when you throw that in the mix as well, that's what's creating, you know, and, and a lot of people understanding the population growth on that side. But if people are listening to this in two or three years and maybe the fundamentals have changed a little bit and, and maybe it isn't so crazy from an international perspective, um, population growth at a smaller level. Um, so when we're talking maybe a city or a region can be a massive influencer, um, of demand, but why are people moving into that area? Why is there such strong population growth or what's gonna drive that super strong population growth? Um, especially your smaller markets, a population growth 
it has to be a significant number to really affect a market of that size. Yeah. Even if you're just talking the the mil plus that's Adelaide, the the two mil plus that's Perth and, and Brisbane, like it has to be a significant amount to affect them, let alone say Sydney or Melbourne. But when you have a small region, and when I say small region, you might be talking 50, 100, 200,000 people. A small shift in that, like let's say a, a five or 10,000 people in a year, it's a significant amount for such a small population. But what's going to bring those people into the area and create that really, really big upturn or that really big shift? Well, I think that probably is pretty closely tied to the next one, which is the biggest driver of population growth to certain areas yes. is availability of jobs. Mm. And the fourth factor you have here is unemployment rates. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And it also ties in really closely with the one that, uh, follows it again being infrastructure projects. So the two of those are almost always very, very closely linked. Um, when something is uh, has a lot of infrastructure projects in the pipeline, um, it will drive a lot of people into a region and sometimes trying to get ahead of those things, um, either being announced um, or knowing they're in the pipelines and being imminent uh, or some projects coming in being approved and then some other big ones coming in after it. Massive driver of population growth for one, which then in turn turns into super low unemployment rates uh, and also tightens up vacancies and everything and, and really, you know, eats out stock right across the right across the board. So those two are super, super important. When you've got really, really strong um, or really low unemployment figures, um, you've got a really, really strong local economy, which means there's more money flowing around. People are being able to ask for waging salary increases, wage increases, some e at the incomes are lifting in an area as well, which allows people to pay more for both rent and sales price. And a lot of the time it attracts people of a um, – um, you know, slightly higher demographic or person, you know, persona as well. Um, you, you know, you're going to attract better, better people to an area if they're being paid more as well. And then that all flows into the sixth, I guess, which is <laughs> overall economic vibrancy yeah, of yeah. the areas that you're looking at, which yeah. I, I imagine, as you said, just kind of neatly sums up population growth, which leads to unemployment rates, infrastructure projects, and then the, mm. the, the type of people that are, are attracted to these areas and the flow and effect that, that that has to overall economic activity. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And even like your, your main streets and stuff, something we always do before we go by anywhere, we'll go drive and walk the main streets. Mainies. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> nice. So we've got two more macro factors, yeah. land inventory and build prices. Before yeah. we get to those, because they're somewhat related, yeah. um, I've always heard that schools are a big one and like you can sometimes correlate uh, improving schools and better school test scores with improving house prices. Yeah. Is that bunk or is that? Um, man, I'll, I'll call uh, in your terms bunk on that. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say something else, but you know. <laughs> um, when a market's flatlining, if somewhere's like desirable from something like that as a perspective, let's say Sydney when it, when it had its downturn or the rest of it in, in 2003 to 2013, your areas that are more desirable from that perspective, yes, they will stay uh, more desirable, right? But they're always going to trade at a premium from that perspective mm. regardless. So it's one of those things I, I think, it, yeah, we'll, we'll call the bunk on it um, <laughs> from that side because it's, yeah, it's it's they will hold up better, especially in a downturn. But yeah, from a growth perspective, I don't, I don't believe they'll outperform. So that leads to the final two macro factors: land inventory and build prices. Yeah, yeah. So land inventory probably goes plays in a little bit to the point of Wagga. So twenty five thousand people. We're talking about something like you know probably fifteen thousand homes, ten, 10 to fifteen thousand homes in the next five years uh, for a city the size of Wagga and how many building companies are going under. Like it's it's an it's an impossible sort of prognosis. You know what I mean? Like it takes it takes too long to get these things approved. So it's, it's one of these things of understanding the land inventory coming through. It's, it's really important to understand what stock will be coming on and it works both ways. So when you can see that it's very, very tight and there isn't that much coming through or you know it's a council that's really slow, if all these things are overlaying on each other and then land inventory is really low or well, that process, like this is not that much coming through from that perspective. You know, it's going to be a delayed period before new homes, whether it's, you know, um, apartments, townhouses or land to actually be built on comes through. And if we're going to have that lag time and that lag period, we know we've got a better chance of like a really strong upsurge. But then on the, on the flip side of it, if we can see a lot coming through from all these different projects of apartments, townhouses, land, builds, all the rest of it, if we know, um, you know, Stockland's got a 5,000 home um, estate that they're, you know, a land block estate that they're releasing over the next five years, um, that's a lot of land coming to the market that home buyers are probably going to gravitate towards that and not have the pressure on the existing housing market. So it's, um, it's really important to understand what's coming through compared to the housing market market that's currently there and then how is that actually going to affect house prices be it up or down or no no real effect on it